We're going to call this Triggers ones to watch. First up, nice. oh, we're going to count down from 12 to 1. So I'm going to start with number 12. All right, this is the 12th guy on my list going into the combine. Prospects to watch. Not necessarily the 12th overall pick, but a player that I loved watching on Saturdays at the ACC. It's Mike Williams, wide receiver from Clemson. If you guys are familiar with his work, he just dominated the college football playoffs. He's also six foot three, Nate, 225 pounds. Listen to some of these games. NC State this year, 12 catches, 146 yards, and a touchdown. Mm. Pittsburgh, 15 catches, 202 yards and a touchdown. Mm. And then Alabama in the national championship game, he had eight catches, 94 yards and a score. He had a neck injury last year, so he doesn't have the career numbers. But Nate, if you watch this guy, the comparisons are all over the board. Right. I was reading you know, one article, Lance Zerline from, from the uh, NFL.com. He said he's a Plaxico Burris type, but then Matt Hamilton, our producer and I, we he's were going through quicker. film. He quicker. says more Demarius Thomas. Yeah. So six foot three, 225 pounds, he's got the size. This, to me, is a top 10 pick. And when you're talking about top 10 pick as a wide receiver, you're talking about NFL superstars. So yeah. Mike Williams out of Clemson, that is a guy to watch. What are your thoughts on a receiver in the top 10? Well, I like the Plexico comparison because of the height and the ability to go high point the ball with his hands. Plexus but when watching the film, you can see that he goes inside. And when you got a receiver that size, that weight, that can go inside, you know, relentlessly, that's a different type of receiver. I mean, I would say... Uh, Demarius Thomas, but there's also, you know, those hybrid guys that are in between a receiver slot tight end that you could use all over the field. And that's what everybody's looking for right now. So he's going to be a big time star in this There league. are other wide receivers in this draft you're going to hear a lot about. That is my number one wide receiver right there, Mike yeah. Williams out of Clemson, the number 11 guy on the list. All right, I watch SEC football on Saturdays. I watch Vern, I watch Uncle Gary, Vern. I watch Tracy Wool, or now it's Allie LaForce. Sure. I watch those games on Saturdays. And there's one guy that always performs. It's Derek Barnett, the defensive end out of the university. <laughs> of Tennessee. You look at this guy, he's already, he broke Reggie White's sack record at Tennessee. It's just production, production, production. His numbers were, were huge. He had 33 sacks in three seasons, 10 plus sacks in three different years on the college level. Now, why is he not being discussed as a top five pick? Well, there's already the tax that he's gotten, you know, one move. He does the spin move, that's it. He does the same bull rush move, whatever it is. Move, Guess what? Vic Beasley had the same criticism. Right. He led the league in sacks this it ain't year. Broke, don't I'll take it. It ain't broke, don't fix Wait, it. Wade Freeney used to hear that. You're going to hear a lot about Miles Garrett, who is most likely going to be the top pick in this draft. But Derek Barnett is a name to watch out of Tennessee. I'm seeing him going in mock drafts like 25, 26. No, no, no. When it's all said and done, this guy will be a top 15 pick. To me, he's the number 11 prospect in this entire draft. He's going to have a good combine, too. He's an athlete. I hate when I hear that they have one move. Because I saw there, you broke you Reggie learned. White's record. You, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Araldus Chapman throws one pitch. It's a fastball, and no one can hit it. <laughs> you don't need a second pitch. <laughs> it works. So now we get a wild card, too? We get a wild card. So, Kay, you know I love pulling these guys from the small schools. And I always write them down. Or these great stories. So this kid's name is Tariq Cohen out of North Carolina a and T. Okay, who is Tariq Cohen? Five six. Hey, he's five foot six. Stop. The comparison that everyone makes is Darren Sproles. He was at the NFL PA Bowl out in California this year. He could he, play for Kyle's uh, dodgeball team. He absolutely we'll can. Three-time MIAC Offensive Player of the Year. Three straight games with over 200 yards last season. We have highlights of Tariq Cohen. Guys. There we go, baby. 5,600 yards in school. <laughs> he had 5,600 yards, 28 career 100-yard games. He's a bite-sized one. Look at that He's going to be at the combine. So you've got all these big running backs. He's Leonard Fournette, who's built like LeBron James. Yeah. Then you've got this kid, Tariq Cohen. You're not going to Built like Kevin James. Yeah, exactly. You have not heard anything He's about him. Yeah. Okay, we're going to love this guy. He's going to be drafted somewhere. I already love it. And we're going to be on Five, fantasy six. next year. And Tariq Cohen's going to blast out an 80-yard run. He's going to be a special teams guy. He's a catch out of the backfield. Tariq Cohen. Cohen. I don't know if he's of the Jewish faith. His last name is Cohen. <laughs> related to Sasha Baron. Cohen. He might be related to Sasha Baron. Brian Cohen. Cohen Good Morning Football. Brian Cohen, our booker at Good Morning Football. First name Mazel Tariq. Tov. Mazel Tov. <laughs> Tariq Cohen, North Carolina A and T, five foot six K. The next yeah. Darren Sproles. I know you I love, love Darren that. Sproles. I love Darren Sproles. He may be coming for your password. Look, we don't know. There's another short guy in Kansas City who made a name for himself. No doubt. Tariq Hill. Yeah. No doubt. He was a big time playmaker. I mean, he might be a running back coming to the league. You play special teams, right. kickoff return, punt return, use him in the backfield, use him in the slot. Guys like this, you know it's a copycat league.
once one thing starts working, yeah. everybody else starts Reminds copying. Me Nate, sometimes oh, during yeah. the show, I'll look over at your face and it lights up, like legitimately lights up like a kid on Christmas. And yeah. that happened. We were watching those highlights. Five what were six. you thinking there? I, I was I was thinking that he's a sleeper. And I think teams are watching that film hoping that other teams aren't paying attention. And that's what it is. You know, you don't want to go out there and speak big money because you don't want to take the risk. But you have this guy on the board. Whether he goes late, he falls, he's a free agent, priority free agent. They know they can hide a guy like that, bring him out week two or three, and be one of the most explosive guys on the field here's the thing about small schools if you're productive there you will be productive in the league I get it the competition is different but if you're a 